Wow. That is a fish of a lifetime. Go, boy. Wow, we. That thing is a monster. They fight hard, don't they? Look at that magnificent fish. Look at the size of that fish. There he is again. The color is incredible. Oh, there we go. The Real Fishing Show with Baba Zumi. Big old Great Lakes small boat. That is a big rainbow trout, Chris. Nice double header. Whoa. <laughs> nice jump. Yeah, all right. That is a monster smallmouth. Man, that is so cool. Another one, there we go. The biggest pike I've ever caught. Look at that chunk. Well, that's what we're talking about. Real fishing is sponsored by Mercury. Go boldly. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Abu Garcia for life. On the Real Fishing Show, we make catching fish like this a possibility. Well, what can I say? It's a beautiful late June day. I'm out on the Great Lakes, one of my favorite areas to fish for smallmouth bass. And you know, late June, you get a lot of fish that are shallow. You got some pre-spawn, some spawn and post-spawn fish. And they're, you know, anywhere from three to say 12 feet deep. And uh, what I like to do during this early season here in Ontario, fish in the Great Lakes, is I like to cover a lot of water till I locate like pockets or pods of fish that are loosely schooled or in an area. So what I'm gonna do is start off, I've got a, a drop shot rig here, just spray a little gulp on. And uh, a lot of people associate the drop shot rig with, you know, fishing vertical below the boat. But what I like to do is shorten up the lead and for shallow water fishing, I will cast a drop shot rig like this little Berkeley water bug under an ultra tungsten weight. And that weight is a quarter ounce cylinder type weight. And what I like to do is cast this thing out, um, let it sink down to the bottom. And what I'll do with this rig is I'll slowly reel it in like this, stopping it every now and then. And I can cover water with this. It's a finesse type rig. And in a lot of cases, what happens is, you know, those fish will just follow, follow, and every now and then I'll stop it, and they'll just come up behind it and eat it like it's live bait. So, you know, I'm just gonna basically fan cast around this area here and see if I can't catch a fish. And then if not, and what there is here is there's the odd boulder and, um, and some rock and gravel that comes off a bit of a point here. So the whole key is, is just cover some water and hopefully get a fish. Oh, there we go. Oh, man. <laughs> this is a bl one of those blacker ones that have been in shallow for a while. And uh, uh, I'll tell you, I could see this thing screaming out after the jig and, and uh, what I did is it's, it's a beautiful June day out here and uh, late June and uh, bass season opened up in Ontario and you know when it comes to great late smallmouth fishing I have to admit I love it and uh, this is just a sample of that early season bass fishing what to expect oh yeah look at that thing that thing is a monster all day long. <laughs> All right, that is such a, uh, a nice bass. And this bait here is called, it's like for Ned rigs, and it's a half moon Berkeley jig head, and it's called the cash out. And uh, Skeet Reese designed this bait here. And uh, it's just a cool finesse type bait, you know, uh, just a, a pretty neat subtle bait for big bass like this. I wanna get this baby back in the water. That's a a nice smallmouth right there. See you later, bud. All righty. Got to put a new bait on because, yeah, well, I might be able to get another fish out of that one. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I've got four rods rigged up on the deck, and I'm going to cast and cover some water. So I've got a little Berkeley Power Swimmer. I've got a Berkeley Spy. And what I'm going to do is just cover water here today and. 
Just look for fish shallow water. Some fish are spawn, pre-spawn, and post-spawn, so there's fish doing everything. Um, it's really been hot the last few weeks, so a lot of smallmouth have flooded up as well, haven't even spawned yet, so kind of got a lot of things going on here, and it's just, what can I say, beautiful day, and uh, life is good. One of the things is that you want good polarized sunglasses for this style of fishing, just shallow water, covering water. You're always looking for fish, boulders, anything that's gonna give you a bit of an advantage. And so good glasses. And uh, here's another thing, it's, it's visual not only by trying to see what's underwater, but when you're reading the shore, if you can see over here, there's some round boulders on the shore. And then you can see the rock shelf that comes out. Well, in this case, a lot of those boulders that you'll see on shore will extend way out to where the boat is here in like five, six, eight feet of water. And so what I like to do is when I'm driving the boat down the lake and I'm looking along the shore and all of a sudden it's, you know, it's, it's uh, some trees and then all of a sudden there's some round boulders. Now I see a little bit of a fertile patch of reeds and stuff back there. I go, oh, there's a point there. Um, coming out, even though, you know, it doesn't look like much of a point till you get up close and you see all this rock coming out and then it curves back in. So these little areas can be real magnets. So what I'm doing is I'm working this little bit of a point here before I put the power poles up and just keep working down the shore. Coming up. You know, that fish there is, you know, probably high three pounds. Come here, baby. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I love it. You know, one thing about smallmouth fishing is I've fished down here for pretty much the last four decades around, well, actually more since I've grown up around the, uh, the Great Lakes. And the smallmouth have definitely gotten bigger over the years. There's no question that they're just big, big, big nowadays. They're, you know, it used to be a fish like this would be like top of the food chain. And this is just a, this is just a nice smallmouth, you know, for, uh, for many parts of the Great Lakes now. You know, that fish there is, you know, probably high three pounds. I don't think it's a four pounder, but it's close, might be a four pounder. But fish like that, they're so common throughout, you know, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, uh, Lake St. Clair you know, Huron, Michigan, they're just everywhere. And that is just such a nice swim right there. A lot of those fish are pretty old too. I mean, that fish there could be somewhere an eight to 12 year old fish. So you really do want to put them back. I don't think I'd want to eat a fish that's that old for sure. So they're just good ones to put back and hopefully they'll have babies and there'll be lots of big ones. Even the little ones can be fun at times. And this one is definitely little and there's another one following him. Whoops, he's lassoed. What the heck? Oh, there he's off. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The line, he was hooked in the mouth and the line went right around his face. Okay. Well, one of the things is, is keep moving, you know. Early season smallmouth fishing until you find them, you might as well just keep making long casts to either see one following your bait or you get a hit. And then just either, in this case, I can use the anchor mode on the electric motor or use the power poles on the back of the boat and just lock it down and fish the area thoroughly once I either see a follow or, or just see a fish. So this little jig head here, it's a, uh, a Berkeley um, half moon, and uh, it's really like a mushroom head style jig. One of the cool things about it, it's got the Fusion 19 needle sharp hooks on it. It's got a barbed uh, collar here, 
So when you put on this bait like this cash out here, um, I'll just thread it on. You can see how the collared part, you slide it up and that holds the bait on just like that. Very finesse, not much to it. And the key with uh, smallmouth, it seems like less is more and finesse baits like this little Ned style cash out are definitely uh, less is more on that rig, that's for sure. <laughs> moved a little deeper here and uh you know what this fish was down down pretty deep so i threw a drop shot down and uh oh yeah it's a nice one and i could actually see this fish down there it was a pretty good one whoa come on over here baby and that's one thing about it. The water is so clear here. You can see so much. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. That's what I love about fishing the Great Lakes. When all the zebra mussels got in here years ago, it uh, just cleaned it up to the point of filtered that water out and just got so gin clear that you can just see everything. Oops, I lost my weight on that one, so I'm gonna have to get another uh, tungsten weight here. Got enough of a tag line, I can still keep using that. But uh, yeah, the water is so, so gin clear, you can see everything. That's what I love about fishing. Pretty well, all the areas of the Great Lakes is just gin, gin clear. Rinse that net off. Thank you, Mr. Bass. One of the things is, you know, when you're using a thin wire hook like I'm using here, I'm using a, a Berkeley braided line called X9. And what I like about this line is very thin diameter, very smooth. You can make long casts with it, no stretch. But with no stretch, you want like a medium action rod with, uh, with, the, uh, with the no stretch on the braid because what happens is is because it doesn't stretch you want a bit of a shock absorber so you don't just completely rip the uh the bait out of the fish's mouth and uh go well, there buddy so it it's all about match tackle really it doesn't take a lot to get a thin wire hook like that into a fish's mouth so with with the no stretch of this x9 braid medium action rod is really just the perfect setup coming up oh there we go oh man that's a good one i think it's endless hey welcome back you know it's uh it's just beautiful out here today and you know when you get these days on the great lakes where it's not blowing very hard and it's probably blowing about three mile an hour right now you gotta just say life is good folks and uh you just gotta keep covering water. And these, you know, a lot of these big rock flats, these areas that, uh, you know, have gravel, boulders and stuff, they're just, just amazing uh, the potential that these places can have. But, you know, you just gotta work and work and work and work till you find the fish. And that's what I love about it is it's endless. Oh, there we go. Oh man, that's a good one, I think. It's endless of where these fish can be. <laughs> I threw a little power swimmer, a 2.8 inch uh, Berkeley power swimmer out. It's a, just a finesse-like swim bait. And 
I would say that in the category of swim baits, for soft plastic lures, there's probably not one plastic lure out there that catches more multi-species of fish than a swim bait. Oh yeah, that's a good one right there. <laughs> that's a good one. Come on then, look at that thing. Oh, get over here. Uh, look at this. That is a pretty good specimen right there. <laughs> look at that thing. And this is uh, one of the swim bait jig heads here. So basically you've got uh, a little eight ounce swim bait jig head, a 2.8 inch uh, power swimmer, you know, big smallmouth bass like small baits. And it's all about finesse when you're using, uh, you know, clear water baits and, and some of these big smallmouth here. I'll tell you, they are awesome. I'm just gonna make sure this guy, whoa, there he goes. See you later, buddy. You know, one of the things with uh, fishing by yourself, I'll switch it up a lot. So, you know, I've got the four rods on the deck. I've got two finesse baits that I can sort of cast at boulders and dark spots. And then I've got uh, basically two search baits that I can throw out. So um, in this case here, I've got a small swim bait on and I'm just covering water with this. You know, just uh, working it here, there, and all over, uh, just making long casts. And if I see, you know, a fish, or if I see a boulder or a dark spot, or even a light spot, depending on the type of water, then I will throw the, uh, I will throw a finesse bait, you know, like a, the Ned uh, rig to cash out, or uh, a drop shot like the little water bug. Okay. Another thing is too, is when you're fishing by yourself, of course, I've got different rods rigged up, but if you're fishing with a friend, it's a good idea to just have both of you doing two different things. And by doing that, this guy's not that big, but by doing that, you know, you're offering the fish something a little different. So maybe one of you could be, be using something like a swim bait as a search bait, then the other could be using a, a prop bait like the Berkeley Spy and covering water till you find some fish in an area. And uh, it's always good to work as a team, you know, if you've got more than one uh, in the boat. Yeah, this isn't a real bad fish. I thought at first it was just a little baby, but it's a, uh, it's a, it's a solid two and a half pounder here. Okay, two pounds, six ounces. <laughs> not, uh, not huge, but you can pacify them like this. It's nice. And then as soon as I put it in the water, watch what happens. See ya. All righty. Folks, stay tuned. I'll be right back fishing a beautiful day out on the Great Lakes, one of my favorite places in the world. Coming up. <laughs> Whoa, that is just too cool. Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View, sponsored by Mercury. Go boldly. More than anything else you hear in fishing is, you should have been here yesterday. If you're strictly a weekend angler, being at the right place at the right time involves a bit of luck. Being flexible helps, but only if you know what to look for. The best thing you can do is follow and record daily weather reports for the places you prefer to fish. This should include barometric pressures, which have a direct influence on game fish behavior. Extended periods of high pressure gradually increase feeding activity. The longer and more stable the pressure, the better. Now look for news of an approaching low pressure system or storm. With safety in mind, the hours before this changeover is when fish go on a feeding frenzy. Once the barometer drops and the cold front arrives, most species of fish shut down. They can still be caught, but you have to literally dangle it in their face. Another factor is a working knowledge of the lake or river you plan to fish. Even though fish may be hitting everything in sight, you still have to find them. 
proven structure is worth a try, but locations with a solid forage base are real hot spots. With a bit of homework and good planning, you can turn that sick day from work into your very own should have been here yesterday. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> wow. You know, oh, I came off. I've talked about this uh, a lot, but you really have to use your eyes fishing. That fish was on a long cast on this prop bait they call a spy. And this bait here is just one of those subtle baits for covering water. And the funny thing is, is that I saw that fish come up and hit that at the end of my cast because, you know, polarized glass is so, so important when you're fishing clear water, smallmouth bass, because you really should look for followers. So anyway, uh, that fish was pretty cool. I watched it come up and eat it. And I don't know, I lost it, but hey, hopefully there's some more out here. Got it. <laughs> Whoa, that is just too cool. There's nothing more exciting than, uh, than fishing uh, shallow clear water and watching this big dark shadow come behind your lure. And I just kept reeling. A lot of lures, you know, whoa, you wanna keep a, a, a steady retrieve. Um, like this, this particular bait here, you can catch some fish by stopping it. But in a lot of cases, what you wanna do is keep a, uh, a steady retrieve if they're following. Now, if they stop, Maybe you want to stop your bait, but in this case here, you know, I saw that fish follow and follow and it was aggressive. Oh, look at that, just hooked by the back hook. That's a good one. That is a good one. Come on in, baby. Okay. Look at that. That is a Great Lakes fatty there. And one thing about these sharp hooks, you don't want to put one in your hand, so I've got the pliers here. Pluck it out. See you later, buddy. All right. And that's what clear water smallmouth fishing is all about right there. You know, just beautiful weather, big water, and big chunky slabs. See you later, guy. Hope to catch you next year. Uh, See you next week right here for some more Real Fishing. Real Fishing was sponsored by Mercury, Go Boldly, Berkeley, Catch More Fish, and Abu Garcia for life. Well, that thing's got some weight to it. <laughs> Size that puppy right there. That is, that is just wild. Man. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look, Look at the size of that thing.